Hello, thanks for joining me. I'm in a rather noisy Haverford West, but peace and quiet can be found at the medieval church of St Mary's, so let's go and explore it. The church is mostly from the 13th century. The arcades are wonderful, with carved capitals, probably the work of the same masons who worked on Wells Cathedral. They include lots of heads with lively expressions, and there's a goat playing a fiddle, a monkey playing a harp, and a dragon with a leafy tail. These would have been painted in colour. There are a few traces of paint remaining. Some of them were hidden under a layer of plaster during the 17th century because they were deemed unsuitable for a holy building. The Puritans lacked the lively medieval sense of humour. It must have been a wonderful surprise to discover them after they'd been hidden for so long. At the end of the north aisle there would originally have been a screen and a chapel with its altar, but now there is this. The case of the oldest working organ in Wales. It dates from 1737 and was originally sited in an organ loft and gallery on the west end of the nave. The rest of it is in an arch in the chancel, where it was moved in 1889. It was rebuilt and enlarged then and now has 1,825 pipes. The Tudor roof is wonderful. It was repaired in the 18th century, the cost of the work recorded by this plaque, right down to the last penny. One of the many treasures of St Mary's is this bench end, carved with an image of a feathery St Michael victoriously brandishing a very short sword and trampling on a three-headed dragon which represents Satan. It looks to me as though work started out very strongly at the top and then the carver suddenly realised he was running out of space, so St Michael has short and weedy legs, and the dragon is not very scary. Everywhere you look in this church, there is something interesting. The chancel is rich in monuments to the great and the good of Haverford West, including the Phillips family of nearby Picton Castle. This one is to Sir John Phillips, who died in 1736, and it's impressive. It tells us he was one of the church commissioners responsible for building 50 new churches in London and a benefactor to many London charities and also charities in Haverford West. This portrait bust, the only one I've seen in Wales, shows him as a powerful man. Putty surround him, one expressing very obvious sorrow at his passing. Above all this, we see a wonderful display of heraldry. There's also a brass monument, they're not common in Pembrokeshire, to John and Sage Davids, who died in the 1650s. It has more heraldry. A depiction of John at his prayers and a grinning skull. Mm. Memento mori. Remember you are mortal. At the west end, unfortunately hemmed in by the plumbing, is this effigy of a late medieval pilgrim. We know it's a pilgrim by the shells, pilgrim badges, on the bag. Over the years the church has been added to and restored many times. The clear story of the early 16th century raised the height of the nave and added light. There were some Victorian additions and Victorian restorations. And at the turn of the 20th century, the diocesan architect, W.D. Caro, carried out further repairs. The stained glass is mostly Victorian. Lots of it by Kemp, including the east window, which shows scenes from the life of Jesus. More brightly coloured is this window by William Wales, showing miracles of healing. This white Whitefriars window is from the 1950s and was given in memory of Mary Thomas, who was a former mayor of Haverford West 
and so it has the town arms at the top. We leave through the north porch. There used to be a chamber over here where the Haverford West Council met, but it was unfortunately demolished in 1863 and this built instead. It contains four stained glass windows by Kemp, showing the four evangelists. They were given by various donors in memory of deceased people, including Charles Jenkins, an RAF pilot killed in the First World War. This one, though, is asking for prayers for Harold Rees Jenkins, midshipman of HMS India, which was sunk off Norway in 1915, and then he was a prisoner of war in Norway for the duration. After the war, he continued in the Royal Navy until 1922, then the Merchant Navy, in the Second World War, and was second officer on the Roxby when she was sunk by a U-boat and was one of the few survivors. He died at sea in 1948. I hope you enjoyed this short tour of St Mary's Church in Haverford West. It's certainly worth visiting in person if you're in the area. Please remember to hit the like button and subscribe to my channel for more such videos. I have a playlist of church visits if you want to go on a virtual church crawl. And as always, thank you for watching.